welcome to Lily's Viking Adventure. If you are new, well met. If you are returning, thank you for coming back again. Today I have six unique creatures to Norse paganism and Norse mythology. We will get started with our first one, Yuramangandar, the Midgard Serpent. Also known as the Midgard Serpent, Yuramangandar is one of the most powerful and awe-inspiring figures in Norse mythology. He is the child of Loki, the trickster god, and Angra Buddha, a giantess. His siblings include three the fearsome wolf Finrir and Hel, the ruler of the underworld. Upon his birth, the gods recognizing his immense potential for destruction cast Jormungandr into the sea that surrounds Midgard, the human world. Over time, Jormungandr grew so large that he encircled the earth and grasped his own tail in his mouth. This image is deeply symbolic and reflects themes present in many ancient cultures. The Ouroboros, or the serpent eating its own tail, is a powerful symbol of infinity, the cyclical nature of time, and the interconnectedness of all things. Jormungandr represents this concept in Norse mythology, embodying both creation and destruction and the idea that all things are bound together in a cosmic cycle. His very presence acts as a reminder of the balance between life and death, order and chaos. The Midgard Serpent's role is not limited to his physical enormity. He also holds a central place in the myth of Ragnarok, the Norse Apocalypse. According to the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda, Jormungandr is destined to engage in a final cataclysmic battle with Thor, the god of thunder. The two have an adversarial relationship throughout the myths, meeting multiple times, but it is during Ragnarok that their fate is sealed. In this prophesied battle, Thor will strike Jormungandr with his hammer, hammer Mjolnir, killing him. However, Thor's triumph will be short-lived, as he will be poisoned by the serpent's deadly venom and will collapse after taking nine steps, dying in the process. This dramatic confrontation between Thor and Jormungandr symbolizes the eternal struggle between order represented by Thor and chaos embodied by Jormungandr. It reflects the Norse understanding of fate or weird as an inevitable force that even the gods cannot escape. The duality between these two forces mirrors the Norse perception of life as a constant balance between opposing elements where neither can permanently defeat the other. In addition to the myths, Jormungandr's legacy has permeated modern culture. He appears in literature, movies and video games such as God of War, where his enormous form is vividly brought to life. His story is a powerful exploration of the cycles of existence fate and the inevitable end of all things. For those interested in delving deeper into Jormungandr's mythology, the Eddas, both the poetic and prose versions, are invaluable resources offering a detailed account of the Midgard Serpent's story and its profound implications in Norse cosmology. Now we move to our next one, which is uh, number two, the Draugr, the undead. The Draugr are among the most terrifying 
and intriguing creatures in Norse mythology. Unlike the mindless zombies of modern fiction, Draugr are malevolent undead beings that rise from their graves with a purpose. Often they are the spirits of those who were particularly greedy, evil or dishonorable in life, and they are unable to find peace in death. Instead they haunt the living, driven by an insatiable need to protect their wealth or seek revenge for past wrongs. In Old Norse texts, such as the Saga of Grettir, the Strong, and the Saga of the Volsungs, Draugr are described as decaying, grotesque figures, with the stench of death clinging to them. Their physical appearance is alarming. They are often bloated with pallid or blue skin, and they exude an overpowering foul odor. Despite their decayed state, Draugr are incredibly strong, capable of crushing their enemies with ease. They can also grow to gigantic sizes and possess supernatural abilities, including shape-shifting and controlling the weather. Draugr can also curse those they despise, bringing misfortune and death to their enemies from beyond the grave. The Draugr are not merely monsters. They embody the Norse perception of death as a continuation of life in a different form. While most spirits move on to realms like Valhalla or Hell, the Draugr represented the darker side of the afterlife, a restless, cursed existence. They are often associated with burial mounds, guarding treasures they hoarded in life and refusing to relinquish their wealth in death. This attachment to material goods serves as a warning about the consequences of greed and selfishness. One of the most famous Draugr stories is found in the saga of Grettir the Strong. In this tale, the hero Grettir must confront Glamour, a particularly powerful Draugr. This battle is not only physical but also psychological. Glamour's death curses Grettir, leaving him to fight against the creeping madness brought on by the Draugr's lingering presence. This story reveals how the Draugr also symbolize unresolved conflicts, lingering guilt, and the fear of death itself. The Draugr have had a lasting impact on modern depictions of the undead, influencing everything, everything <coughs> from fantasy novels to video games like Elder Scrolls, Skyrim, where players encounter powerful Draugr warriors within ancient tombs. Their legacy as a symbol of death's continuing influence over living creatures in both popular culture and academic explorations of Norse mythology. For those interested in further exploring the lore of Draugr, the Icelandic sagas offer rich narratives filled with encounters between heroes and these undead beings, delving into the nature of fear, death, and the supernatural. And now, on to our next, number three, Trolls. Trolls are among the most iconic and versatile figures in Norse mythology and Scandinavian folklore. They appear in a variety of forms, from colossal, terrifying giants to smaller, mischievous beings who live in remote areas. Trolls are deeply connected to the natural world, often inhabiting mountains, caves, forests, and even beneath bridges. In many myths, they are depicted as antagonists to both gods and humans, representing the untamed and chaotic forces of nature that humans have always struggled to control. In the Prose Edda and other Norse texts, trolls are often portrayed as enemies of the gods. For example, Thor, the god of thunder, 
frequently engages in battles with trolls during his adventures. Trolls are generally characterized as beings of immense physical strength, but limited intelligence, making them easy for humans to outwit. This reflects a broader cultural narrative where intellect and cunning are seen as superior to brute force, a recurring theme in many folk tales. The descriptions of trolls vary across different regions and stories. In some cases, trolls are depicted as ugly, slow-witted brutes, while in others they are cunning tricksters who pose a serious threat to humans. Trolls are also associated with certain natural landmarks, particularly rock formations. According to Scandinavian folklore, many of the large boulders and towering cliffs were once trolls who were torn to stone by the light of the sun. This aspect of their mythology ties trolls to the landscape itself, imbuing the natural world with a sense of ancient hidden magic. The relationship between humans and trolls is complex. In many folk tales, trolls represent the dangers of the wild, untamed world beyond the safety of the village. They are the embodiment of what lies outside human control, both in the natural environment and in the realm of the supernatural. Stories of humans encountering trolls often center on the theme of resourcefulness where a clever human outsmarts the stronger but less intelligent troll. In doing so, these tales underscore the triumph of human ingenuity over nature's overwhelming power. Modern interpretations of trolls are varied, from the monstrous versions seen in works like The Lord of the Rings, to more humorous depictions in films like Troll Hunter and frozen in contemporary Scandinavian culture. Trolls have maintained their place as figures of folklore, often appearing in children's stories and local legends. For those eager to dive deeper into the rich world of trolls, collections of Scandinavian folklore and the Prose Edda provide extensive tales of these fascinating creatures offering a glimpse into how they reflect humanity's relationship with the natural world. Fenrir, the wolf, one of my favorites. Fenrir, the monstrous wolf, is one of the most compelling and fearsome figures in Norse mythology. Like his siblings, Jormungandr and Hel, Fenrir is the offspring of Loki and the giantess Angroboda. Fenrir's story is one of both terror and tragedy, as his fate is inextricably linked to the destruction of the world during Ragnarok. The gods, aware of Fenrir's potential for chaos, attempt to restrain him from an early age. However, Fenrir's immense strength and defiance make him a creature impossible to control by ordinary means. In their first attempt to subdue Fenrir, the gods forge a series of chains, each stronger than the last. However, Fenrir easily breaks through them all. Eventually, the gods turn to the dwarves, master smiths known for their magical creations, to craft a special binding the dwarves produce Gleipnir, a magical ribbon made from seemingly impossible materials, such as the sound of a cat's footsteps and the roots of a mountain. Though it appears weak, Gleipnir is unbreakable. The gods trick Fenrir into allowing them to bind him with it, but Fenrir, sensing treachery, demands that one of the gods place their hand in his mouth as a sign of good faith. Tyr, the god of war and bravery, agrees, and as the binding tightens, Fenrir bites off Tyr's hand, solidifying his enmity with the gods. 
Many believe Odin set his own fate in this act. Fenrir's binding is only temporary, as it is prophesied that he will break free during Ragnarok, the end of the world. During this apocalyptic event, Fenrir will seek vengeance and play a central role in the destruction of the cosmos. He is fated to kill Odin, the Allfather and ruler of the gods, in a climactic battle. However, Odin's death will be avenged by his son Vidar, who will kill Fenrir, thus completing the tragic cycle of violence and revenge that defines much of Norse mythology. Of note is that Fenrir does not take vengeance against Tyr, as Tyr's wergeld is paid by the sword arm Fenrir took, and he owes no more debt. Fenrir's story raises existential questions about power, fear, and fate. Although the gods seek to control Fenrir out of fear of his destructive potential, their actions ultimately lead to the fulfillment of the very prophecy they sought to avoid. Paradoxical. Fenrir, in many ways, is a tragic figure. He is a creature born into a world that fears him, and his eventual role in Ragnarok is shaped by the circumstances of his imprisonment. Despite his fearsome nature, Fenrir also evokes a degree of sympathy. His fate, like that of many characters in Norse mythology, is predetermined. And he is as much a victim of the gods' actions as he is a harbinger of destruction. It is important to remember that when Fenrir is bound, he has committed no crimes. His story explores themes of destiny and the consequences of fear-driven actions, making Fenrir a complex figure who embodies both primal chaos and the inevitability of fate. Fenrir's tale has inspired countless modern retellings and adaptations appearing in literature, film, and video games. For those looking to explore his mythology in greater detail, the Prose Edda and various retellings of Norse myths provide a rich and nuanced portrayal of this fearsome yet tragic creature. Our next is Noken, the water spirit. Noken, also known as Naken, in Swedish folklore, is a mysterious and captivating water spirit deeply rooted in Scandinavian mythology. <clears throat> Noken's form and nature vary depending on the region and story, but he is often portrayed as a shape-shifting being who dwells in lakes, rivers, and streams. Typically, Noken appears as a handsome young man or a beautiful woman, though in some tales he takes on a more monstrous form. Regardless of his appearance, Noken is always associated with danger, particularly the peril that comes from the allure of his hauntingly beautiful music. In most stories, Noken uses his enchanting music to lure unsuspecting victims to their doom. His melodies, often played on a fiddle or harp, are said to be irresistibly beautiful drawing listeners closer to the water where they are drowned or taken beneath the surface. These tales serve as cautionary warnings about the dangers of water and the seductive nature of temptation. In Scandinavian culture, the water represents both life and death, a source of sustenance and danger. Noken embodies this duality representing the hidden threats that lurk beneath the calm surface of a lake or a river. The stories of Noken are often moralistic, warning people, especially young women and children, against wandering too close to water alone or falling prey to temptation. In some versions, the Noken's music is so powerful 
that it drives people mad or compels them to drown themselves. However, there are also tales where a clever or brave individual outsmarts the Nokin, escaping his deadly grasp. These variations highlight the tension between humanity's fear of and fascination with the natural world. The Nokin myth has permeated art, literature, and music throughout Scandinavia. The famous Norwegian composer Edvard Grieg even wrote a piano piece inspired by the legend capturing the eerie and melancholic beauty of the water spirit's music. In visual art, Nokin is often depicted as a shadowy figure lurking beneath the surface of the water, waiting to ensnare his next victim. For those interested in exploring the many variations of the Nokin myth, Scandinavian folklore collections and regional tales offer a wealth of stories that explore the darker, more mysterious aspects of nature and human vulnerability to temptation. Number six, Jotun or Jotunar. Giants. The Jotunar occupy a prominent place in Norse mythology as the giants who exist in opposition to the gods of Asgard. These primal beings represent the forces of nature and chaos, often depicted as enemies of the Asir gods. However, the relationship between the Jotunar and the gods is not purely antagonistic. The Jotunar embody the wild, untamed aspects of the natural world, mountains, storms, and the elements. And while they are often in conflict with the gods, they are also integral to the balance of the cosmos, frequently even mating and marrying the gods and goddesses of the Asir. The mythology surrounding the Jotunar is rich and complex, with many individual giants playing significant roles in Norse stories. One of the most important figures is Ymir, the primordial giant from whose body the world was created. According to the Prose Edda, Odin and his brothers killed Ymir and fashioned the earth from his flesh, the oceans from his blood, and the sky from his skull. This myth reflects the cyclical nature of creation and destruction in Norse cosmology, where even the gods must rely on the raw materials of chaos to bring about order. Despite their opposition to the gods, the Jotunar are not always depicted as evil or monstrous. Many of them are wise and powerful beings, and there are instances of intermarriage between gods and giants. For example, the goddess Skadi, often associated with winter skiing and hunting, is a Jotun, who marries the god Njord. This marriage reflects the complex and sometimes cooperative relationships between the gods and the giants highlighting the idea that chaos and order are not always in opposition, but can coexist in harmony. Thor, the god of thunder, is perhaps the most famous opponent of the Jotunar. Many of his adventures involve battling giants, and these stories often emphasize the themes of strength and bravery, and the constant struggle between the forces of civilization the gods, and the untamed wilderness, the giants. However, the Jotunar are not always portrayed as adversaries. Some giants, like Mimir, possess great wisdom, and others like Skadi form alliances with the gods. And this complexity adds a depth to the depiction of the Jotunar. 
showing them as multifaceted beings who represent the unpredictable and awe-inspiring power of nature. In modern times, Jotunar continued to captivate the imagination, appearing in films, books, and games that draw upon their mythological roots. The tension between order and chaos, nature and civilization, remains a powerful theme that resonates with audiences today. For those who wish to explore the stories of the Jotunar in greater depth, the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda are essential texts. These ancient sources offer a window into the world of giants and their complex relationships with the gods, providing a wealth of stories that continue to inspire modern interpretations. <clears throat> And I have one bonus. This one I added on because I have done a video recently on the Holdra and Nerthus. And if you would like to go look at that one, uh, it's a little bit more in depth, but I am adding the Holdra as a, a seventh creature to this one. Number seven, the Holdra. The enchanting forest spirit, the Holdra captivating and often mysterious figure in Scandinavian folklore, is a forest-dwelling spirit known for her extraordinary beauty and magical powers. While she is generally portrayed as a stunningly beautiful woman, her supernatural nature is betrayed by a few distinct physical characteristics, most notably a hollow back like a tree trunk or, in some variations, the tail of a cow. The Holdra is consider considered a member of the wider family of Holdafolk, or hidden people, beings who live out of sight of humans but influence the natural world. Like other mythical creatures, the Holdra represents the untamed, seductive, and sometimes dangerous aspects of the wild. The Huldra is commonly seen as a guardian of the forests, often associated with fertility, the vitality of nature and its secrets. She is simultaneously a figure of alluring beauty and a deadly peril, as her seductions can either lead to joy or ruin. Men who encounter her are frequently warned that if they fail to please or respect her, they meet with a tragic end. <clears throat> However, if treated kindly, the Huldra can be generous, offering gifts of knowledge, good fortune, or safe passage through her domain. In many folk tales, the Huldra uses her beauty and enchanting voice to lure men deep into the forest. Once isolated from the safety of the village, she may propose marriage or lead her victim into a deadly trap. A recurring theme in these stories is the importance of discerning appearances. Those who see beyond the surface can detect her hollow back or tail and realize the danger she poses. In some legends, a man who marries a Holdra can break her curse and transform her into a mortal woman losing her tail and her magical powers. However, this transformation is not always peaceful. The Holdra may grow bitter or retain her dangerous nature, symbolizing the unpredictable consequences of human interaction with the wild. The duality of the Holdra reflects deeper themes in Scandinavian folklore where nature is both a source of life and death. The forest, which she embodies, offers sustenance, but it also harbors dangers for those who enter unprepared or disrespectful. The stories of the Holdra serve as cautionary tales about venturing too far into the unknown, acting carelessly in nature, or failing or falling prey to temptation without recognizing the inherent risks. Despite her often fearsome nature, 
the whole tra is not purely malevolent. She is sometimes depicted as a lonely, misunderstood figure, longing for companionship or relief from her otherworldly existence. In these stories, the Holdra can be seen as a tragic character, cursed to wander the forest forever, forever separated from the human world she desires to join. Her loneliness is palpable in these accounts, making her an enigmatic figure of both fear and sympathy. In some regional variations, the Holdra's relationship with humans is more neutral or even protective. In Norwegian folklore, she is known to reward those who treat her kindly, such as woodsmen or travelers who show respect for the forest. If a man agrees to help her or fulfills a task she asks of him, he might be blessed with prosperity or success in his endeavors. This version of the Holdra represents her as a guardian spirit of the wilderness, reinforcing the idea that harmony with nature brings rewards, while mistreatment invites disaster. The Holdra also serves as a reflection of the Scandinavian people's relationship with their environment, especially in regions where forests were vast and mysterious, holding both resources and dangers. Her connection to fertility and the natural cycles of the earth echoes ancient beliefs in animism, where spirits of nature governed the health and success of communities. Her ability to control or influence the environment, from bountiful crops to catastrophic storms, reminds us of humanity's dependence and vulnerability to the natural world. In modern adaptations, the Holdra has appeared in literature, film, and music, capturing the imagination of contemporary audiences. She represents an enduring fascination with the mysteries of the wild and the untamed aspects of nature that resist human control. Films like Thale 2012 explore the Holdra myth in a modern context reinterpreting her story as one of both beauty and horror. For those interested in exploring the rich folklore surrounding the Holdra, Scandinavian folktale collections and ethnographic studies provide many stories that illuminate her enigmatic nature. These tales, while fantastical, also reflect broader cultural values about respect for nature the dangers of temptation, the thin veil between the human and supernatural worlds. If you enjoyed this exploration into Scandinavian mythological creatures, please like, follow and subscribe to my channel, Lily's Viking Adventure. Or you can go check out my new Etsy store, where I make cups that tell stories as well and they go right along with the channel. And they are very beautiful, I might say. I really love them. I just got done making a holder a cup the other day. I'll leave a link in the description below. Where else can you get a holder a cup? I hope to see you next time. And together, we can continue to explore the rich Norse history, mythology, and folklore. Sleep sweet, my friends, and thank you.